Hey guys, welcome to Juicy Tea, where I read out the best stories on Reddit so you don't have to. The funny, shocking, and satisfyingly juicy. Today is Anti Work Monday with a few stories that will help you get through the week. I left behind a dead man switch in the company workflow when I sensed I was about to be bullied into quitting. Our first story comes from the Pro Revenge subreddit, posted by the Tweebuy. First of all, this story is a bit older, but I'll try and keep stuff rather ambiguous just for my own safety. I don't know how much my company can find out. So let's get started. I started working in logistics at a company that builds things. This was just as COVID was starting actually. When I joined, there was only 5 people in the team and one of the guys quit soon after. This is important because it was a very good insight into how my department operates when they don't need or want a certain person around. They won't outright fire you since they'd have to pay you severance, but instead they will bully you into quitting. I saw pretty much the whole package, excluding them from meetings and important events, putting them down in public, lecturing them, never noticing good work done, but always making sure everyone knows about work that's poorly done, drowning someone in work and then berating them when they inevitably can't keep up, etc. It was outright childish at times. I didn't register it at the time, but it really was a valuable lesson for later. I was put in charge of managing our overseas suppliers, among other things. About half of our material came from overseas, most of that from China. While it seems like a big task for someone new, it wasn't done out of malice. Genuinely, everyone believed that we were going to get a guy in China for the Chinese suppliers and then I'd be left to handle the handful of others. It seemed fair. But we never got that guy for China and I was left with all the overseas suppliers. Another important thing is that just in this project, the company had decided to change the workflow for overseas suppliers. This was due to COVID because the price of shipping containers had exploded. To explain it as simply as possible, previously, the suppliers were responsible for filling our containers and bringing them to the harbour. We were responsible for picking them up from the harbour and bringing them to us. However, due to demands and other things, Sometimes we just needed two or three pallets of parts where a dozen or more could fit inside a container, so we were shipping a lot of air. The new workflow would have the suppliers bring the parts to an external warehouse, one in the US or one in China, and then we'd load them into containers and get the containers as full as possible and then bring them to the harbour and then to our plant. This way, we need to rent far fewer containers. This complicated things because it erased the direct contact from us to the suppliers and there was no official method of how we're going to keep in contact with the suppliers, tell them how many parts we needed, how to package them and if there were any changes requested, etc. During that time, I was left mostly alone to deal with it and I set up a system with Excel. It was mostly manual, rather simple, but it worked well. It worked so well that one of the suits even chatted with me about it for a bit since he wanted to make it a standard in future projects. And also, this is very important, I was the only person who actually knew all of our overseas suppliers and their contacts. Some of you might be able to tell where this story is going already. So during that entire time, nobody had actually bothered to ask me to explain to them how my system worked and where I keep track of all the supplier contacts. All of this data was hidden on like slide 800 of some Excel file I'd saved in a folder titled Part Pictures, which was otherwise filled with pictures of parts. Now moving forward, as COVID began to die down, the department, for whatever reason, decided they didn't need me anymore. I have theories but nothing certain, so I'll just leave it at that. I saw pretty much precisely the same thing go down as I'd seen with that one guy who'd left shortly after I started. All the bullying. I thought to myself at first, if I pulled through and kept doing a good job, and I believe I did a great job, they'd eventually cool down. But they didn't. After two months, I said effort and decided to just sit out and endure until the Christmas bonus we get every year and then hand in my notice. I also delayed teaching anyone how my system worked until I was gone. And that is pretty much how it happened. Off topic. For my own future employment, I actually lucked out. 
one of the local suppliers I was managing had a really chill guy as managing director. I gave him a call and explained that I was about to be unemployed and asked if they needed staff. He then called me in for an interview. We talked about anime for an hour while his HR lady looked confused about what Attack on Titan was. He told me I could come in the moment I was done with my then current job. Back on topic. A month into working at my new job, I get a call from my old job, the department manager. To his credit, he was always a reasonable guy. He told me, in plain words, that they have no idea where the EF to even start with the Chinese suppliers. He then offered me my old job back with a very respectable pay increase. Ah, it's almost like they needed you more than you needed them. Guess they shouldn't have squeezed you out. I explained that I already had a new job. Two days later, I got another call where the same manager offered me many times my monthly salary just to come in for one week and instruct my old team in how my process functioned, introduce them to all the contacts, etc. I told him no and that I was refusing the offer because of the way I had been treated by them when I worked there. He said he understood and wished me luck at my new job and hung up. The reason I'm writing this now? This week, I randomly got in touch with some of the people in the transport department of my old job. They mentioned that in the now 10 months since I left, the logistics department has racked up 8 figure losses due to wrong deliveries, over and under deliveries, outdated parts, some suppliers cancelling their contracts, and new suppliers needing to be sourced, etc. And the blame for all of that fell on my old team. My new job is fine. It's not the best job, but I get to travel a lot and get nice bonuses for it. My new boss isn't around much since he married. I do sometimes regret not taking that offer for a week as an instructor. So yeah, hope you all enjoyed the read. Too long didn't read. Company put me in charge of managing overseas suppliers. Unintentionally make me the only guy who knew the suppliers and knew the system I'd created to exchange data with them. When my company started bullying me into quitting, I avoided instructing anyone from my team in how my system worked, leading to them asking me to come back after I quit and then racking up 8 figure losses after I refused to come back. <laughs> With 8 figure losses, I'm betting they're regretting it more than you. Calling me on a day off? Cha-ching! Our next post is from the Malicious Compliance subreddit. Posted by Canadutchen. This happened well over a year ago, but as a unionized employee, I get every third Friday off. On my day off, I'm playing video games and I get a text from the boss. I know it's your day off, but whatever, that's easy to ignore. But then I get a second text and after I ignore that, I get a call. Boss, I know it's your day off, but our phones are down. Me, no worries, I'll handle it. We hang up and I call our phone provider. I'm the IT in contact there and this isn't my first ever call to them, so I literally have their service department saved to my phone. I call, register the problem, and they say they'll look into it. I provide them my boss's name and extension and tell them to call him back when it's fixed. I then call my boss back and let him know they'll call him ASAP. But now for the malicious compliance bit. Our contract stipulates a minimum call-in of 4 hours meaning that you cannot pay me less than 4 hours for a day unless it's by my own choosing. If you call me in for an hour and send me home, I get 4 hours pay. But wait, there's more. We also have an overtime clause that pays OT at 150%. And lastly, we have a clause that says all overtime must be approved by the boss or else it's time in lieu, which you can take at a 1 to 1 ratio. I.e. if I decide that the weekend is a good time for server updates, I don't need to ask for approval. But my two hours of work only translates to two hours of pay time off elsewhere. Combine all of this in one delightful batch and you get a 10 minute phone call that results in six hours of bank time off. I went right back to my video games, filled out my timesheet the week after and said, I know it's your day off, but is implied consent for overtime. Minimum call out of 4 hours at 150% is 6 hours. Almost an entire day off with pay in exchange for a 10 minute phone call. Thank you very much. Bonus, guess who has 2 thumbs and has since 
never been called on his day off. This unionized guy? Hint, get unionized, fight back. Edit, didn't think this would take off like this. Of course, anyone saying that this isn't malicious is right. Sadly, we live in a world where a lot of people are expected to work beyond their scope. And while my experience should be normal, it really isn't for a lot of people. The expectation my boss had, I presume, is that I'd write down the 15 minutes, we write down our time in blocks of 15, and be content with that. We all deserve A. To be left alone during our time off, and B. To be compensated, and compensated well if we are asked to give up our time off to do a work thing. You work to live after all, not the other way around. To those asking what IT union I'm with, I'm not with a special IT union, it's just a union with experience with office jobs. If you're interested in joining a union and don't know where to start, call any local union. A nurses or plumbers union will gladly point you to the right place if they can't help you themselves. More unionised workers are good for everyone because we, as a working class, need to understand that we're all in this together. I wanted to use my last few weeks to help them hire, but management had other ideas. Posted by a throwaway account. I recently left my job, but I wanted to leave in good faith. They hired someone who'd be working alongside me, and their start date just happened to be the start date that I got for my new job. I pushed back my new start date by three weeks in order to train up the new starter. When I handed in my resignation, I told my boss that I'd push back my last day to help the team out. I came up with a training plan and wrote a 30 page handover. I started that role with nothing and had to figure it all out on the job. I spent my first week following my plan and teaching the replacement how to do my job. But during my second week, my senior supervisor comes and asks me to do all these extra tasks, basically data collection that literally anyone else in the team could do, organising contracts due long past my final day, and tasks of the new hire that she already knew how to do. When I'd spend time training up my replacement, I got told to spend more time on the data tasks. And when I worked on the data tasks, I got told it was more important to do the training. And the kicker? My last day was the 18th, and I was told to get work in by the 20th. Um, what? I wanted to leave in good faith because I loved the team, and I knew my departure would see gaps in the workload. I didn't extend my time with them to do busy work. You try to leave in good faith, but sometimes you just can't stop them from shooting themselves in the foot. Never again will I do that. Management doesn't care about you as a person. They care about you as an output. No more good faith for me. Update. I've only been gone a month and they're already calling me to come back. A few weeks ago, I made a post about leaving my job and instead of my employer allowing me to train my replacement, which we agreed about when I told him I was leaving. I got given 101 things to do before I left. I've been at my new job for just over a month now and I absolutely love it. The culture is so much better. The work is more aligned with my passions and I haven't had a panic attack since. RIP. It's just all around better. This week, my old boss texted me, asking me to call him. I was very confused because he gave me no context and hasn't reached out to me since leaving. He wants me to subcontract back to the old job for a month or so and do catch up work and train my replacements. Please note the S on replacements. They've had to hire two people to replace me and they still can't keep on top of the work that I was doing by myself. And apparently no one else there knows enough to train them either. Figures, since I had to train myself. Spoilers. I'm not doing it. Remember, they need you more than you need them. I post new content every day, so subscribe for more juicy tea.